In this video presentation, we're gonna look at wiring in trunking. In a previous video presentation, we looked at how many conductors could be installed in a conduit using Appendix E of the on-site guide. We're gonna to continue to use Appendix E, but some different tables, to work out how many cables we can install within trunking. We're gonna be predominantly looking at installing it within metal trunking, where the calculations in the table have taken into consideration the cables that are installed will take up 45% of the room, and 55% of the room will be taken up by space. When calculating cables in different types of trunking enclosures, say mini trunking, this factor still applies. 45% taken up by the room of the cable, and in that case the cable may have an additional sheath on it, and 55% taken up by space. But by using Appendix E of the on-site guide, that has been taken out of our hands. However, we're not interested in grouping at this stage. Grouping will be done separately in the design element of the circuit. However, where you add more cables into an existing trunking, you must take in consideration how much additional space that the cable is gonna take up within a trunking, but also take into consideration grouping with other circuits. So for this presentation, we're gonna work out and use the notes that I have produced in order to find out how many cables of differing sizes can be installed into a trunking, as well as selecting a trunking based on the circuits given. So you're watching this now and you're thinking, that's all right for all garage students at Tresham College. I can watch the video, but how can I maybe carry the calculations out alongside GAS? You can do that by visiting the eFix Apprentice Hub, look for the Teacher's Corner, click on that, and the set of notes that we're going to do in this presentation are covered in there under Trunking Calculations. So download that set of notes or have it in front of you, and you can follow along this presentation and further develop your skills, level one, level two, or level three diplomas or City and Guild qualifications you're carrying out. I'm gonna bring the camera a lot closer so we can look at the calculations that I've got in my notes that you can download off the eFix Apprentice Hub. So I'm gonna to attempt to walk you through the wiring in trunking within my notes at Tresham College or on the eFix Apprentice Hub in the teacher's corner. When you get the trunking notes off, they are only about the wiring. So the pre-learning that we'd have done at Tresham, talking about different types of trunking, etc., is missing from the notes. We're straight into how to wire in trunking and get the right number of cables on basis on what size the actual trunking is itself. It's a missing gap on the first page that I'm looking at in the wiring in trunking and the missing pack page is the appendix needed in order to do these calculations. It's appendix E from the on-site guide. An appendix we've looked at before when doing uh, cables in conduit systems. So we're in appendix E and we're going to scroll through to find the correct tables and we're going to be using tables E5 and E6. Okay, so table E5 is looking at the factor for the conductors that we install in exactly the same way as we did in the set of notes that we looked at when we were doing cot sizing conduits. So example being, first of all, we've got the type of conductors, whether they're solid or stranded, okay? And we know that in trunking and conduit systems, we're always working with stranded cables. And then we've got the cross-sectional area in column number two. So we've got solid at 1.5 and 2.5, which we're not gonna use. And then we've got stranded from 1.5 all the way down to 25 millimeters squared. The next two columns are talking about the type of insulation around the conductors. And I generally get for column three, my learners to write the words thermoplastic over the top. So that's a thermoplastic PVC. It currently says PVC BS6004 cables. And if we write thermoplastic above them, we know what we're talking about. And then the final column says, thermosetting PVC, which is an insulating material that we commonly use around the conductors in steel wire armoured, but you can also get singles with thermosetting PVC on them. So for my notes, I'm gonna be concentrating in the section for stranded, and I'm gonna be concentrating in the one for what is thermoplastic PVC, the 6004 cables. So that's where we get the factor for the cables itself, exactly the same as we did in conduit. And then what we do is we turn over to the next one, which is table E6, and this is the factors for trunking. The big difference now is they're not really in uh, a logical order for the factors. Example being, so if we look at 50 by 38, the factor for the actual trunking is 767. The next one down is 50 by 50, so we've moved up a side of trunk size of trunking. However, the factor there is 1037, 
And then when we go up to the next one, we've got 75 by 25, the factor is 738. So they're not in a logical order for factors. So in Gary's notes, I expect you to find the smallest trunking available during the calculations. So you have to scan through looking at the actual factors until you find the one closely matches the factors generated by the conductors. So that will become uh, more relevant and apparent as we work through the notes itself. So that's the appendix E, tables E5 for the conductors and table uh, E6 for the factor for the actual trunking. So those go in here, okay, so we've put the page numbers in, these page numbers will change every time the uh, on-site guide is updated, but we're looking at table E5 and table E6 in order to complete those missing gaps. So okay, let's move on to the next page. The page here has an example on it, so if we pull down the actual page and the eFix download area, you'll see it's exactly the same page, it's an example. Example here, so what we're looking at is 50 by 50 trunking, so I'll take these cables out, they were there for just visual purposes, so we take those out. This is a 50 by 50 metal trunking, the most common trunking that we use in the electrical workshop, and that's what it's talking about, as well as this size of conductors here, and they're all the same color, wouldn't expect them to all be the same color, but it's what I've cut off a bunch. And these are 1.5 thermoplastic PVC stranded conductors. And the example says to you, how many of these do you think that you can get inside the actual trunk in itself and not exceed the capacity? Okay, so the capacity meaning the cables will take up 45% of the room and air will be left for 55% of the room. So that's example number one. So we're gonna work through that one together, okay, using the on-site guide in Appendix E. So let's see what we're gonna be doing. So the first thing says, okay, let's read the question. How many 1.5 millimeter squared single core thermoplastic stranded cables do you think you can get in a 50 by 50 mil trunk cable? So how many do we think we can get in there? It asks for an estimate, so I like people to have a guess at this stage. So estimate or guess how many cables you think you can get into there. Hopefully you'll do that. And then it asks you by step by step to work out what you're using. Well, we're gonna be using, the first table is E5, E5 being the factor for the actual conductors. Don't get caught out by using the ones for solid. Let's drop down and look for stranded. And it's 1.5 mil stranded thermoplastic is 8.6. Okay, so 8.6. So the next bit, the gap here that is in your notes requires you to put 8.6 in there. Obtain the factor for the cable to be installed if they're 1.5 millimeters squared, we know they're thermoplastic. We've inserted 8.6. The next stage requires us to use the next table, the next table being E6, and we've got to look for the factor for 50 by 50 mil trunking. So 50 by 50 is just here, that's the trunking dimensions. It has a factor of 1037. If you remember back to our conduit calculations, you can think to yourself, hang on, I know what Gaz is gonna do next. He's gonna take that number there, 1037, and he's gonna divide it by the factor for the actual cables itself, which was 8.6. You're right, that's what we're going to do, and that will tell you how many 1.5 mil cables can go in. So as we come down to the next section, divide the cables of factor of 8.6 into the trunking factor of 1037. Then we do the calculation. The calculation, as I just said, was 1037 divided by 86, and that will give you the total number of cables that can be installed. And the cables say that you can install 120.58 cables. Okay, well, we can't install 0.58 of a cable, but maths, it's gone beyond the five after the decimal point. Can we round up? No, exactly the same as what we said when we were doing uh, the conduit calculations on a previous video, you always have to round down, meaning the total number of cables that can be installed inside here, a 50 by 50 mil trunk in, if they're 1.5 millimeter squared thermoplastic stranded conductors is 120. If you install 120 cables in here, you haven't gone beyond the 45% space factor taken up by the actual cables itself. It's nothing to do with grouping, remember? If you put that many conductors in there in a calculation for design, you would have had to suggest that they were grouped together with a certain number of circuits. So that's the example that we need you to fill out, whether you're filling it out in Gary's notes, uh, doing maybe some distance learning, or whether you've downloaded it off the eFix Apprentice Hub. That's the first calculation. Estimate, and then I've walked you through how to do it. Just quickly recap. 
Table E5, factor for the cables 8.6, factor for the trunk in was 1037. You did 1037 divided by 8.6 and we got an answer when rounded always down to 120 cables that can go inside a 50 by 50 mil trunk in. Let's turn to the next page. The next page is a problem, so I'm not going to work you through the problem, you're going to do this yourself. All of my problems generally, the, the first one's going to be very similar to what we've just done. Let's read the questions. How many 1.5 millimeter squared single core thermoplastic stranded cables can be in this time 100 by 100 mil trunk in? So if we go back to the on-site guide, we're going to use exactly the same factor because we're working with 1.5 mil cable. So we can use the same factor, but it requires you to look up a differing factor for the trunking in E6. This time you're looking at the one for 100 by 100. So again, look down here, look down here until you find the 100 by 100. Then you get that factor. That will be the one that you're working through then as problem number one. Problem number two, four mil cable, 75 by 75. You attack that problem. And then we go on for example number two in the next part of the presentation. So for the next part of the presentation, uh, we've got example number two. I've worked for example number one. It will always be easier having a handout in front of you because obviously you're trying to see what I'm doing on the screen. Either you're working with your handout from my notes or you've downloaded it or you're looking at the one on the eFix Apprentice Hub. So if I scroll through on the eFix Apprentice Hub, we've got the ones you've just worked through and then we've got, aha, the example. So we've got the example there as well. So you've got it in front of you and we can look at it at the same time. This time they're slightly different. They've got differing circuits or different cable sizes within it. And we've got to choose the trunking based on the circuits we've put in it. So we're going to use the information we've just used here. I'll read it to you. Hopefully you've got it in front of you as well. Select the trunking that can contain the following single core thermoplastic PVC stranded cables. If I had 12 1.5s, if I had um, 10 2.5, millimeter squared and eight four millimeter squared thermoplastic PVC cable. So they're all in millimeter squared, they're all thermoplastic PVC and they're all stranded. So before we do anything else, we know that we're gonna be working in table E5, we're gonna be using stranded and we're gonna be using the thermoplastic factor for those cables. And we're gonna now have to pick the numbers here of these that we've got. So how many one fives, fours, etc. So let's see how that's gonna break down when I move down my table itself. So select a uh, table and you'd insert there E5. E5 will give you the following. So we've got a factor according to here, according to table E5, we've got a factor for 1.5 mil cable of 8.6, a factor for 2.5 mil cable of 12.6, and a factor of four millimeter squared cable of 16.6. So in your notes, you'll first of all position those cable factors in, and then we're gonna multiply them by the number of those conductors we have. So we were told in the question we had 12, 10, and eight. So 12, 10, and eight. So that's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna multiply them to the number of conductors. So as we bring that down, oh look, I had a little mistake in my set of notes, hopefully it's been corrected in yours. So we've got 1.5 millimeter squared cables have a factor of 8.6, which will be missing in your notes and you'll need to insert it, multiplied by the number of conductors, 12. And when you do that in the calculator, I'm not gonna show you that, this is the example, the calculation. So we do 8.6 times 12, I got 103.2. I then did the 2.5 factor of 12.6 and multiplied it by 10 to get 126. And then I did the four millimeter squared cable with a factor of 16.6 and multiplied it by eight to get 132.8. And when I added those all together, I got a total cable factor of 362. Okay, so I've gone quickly through these calculations. You can always pause it, take a breath, etc. So what we've got there is the total factor for the cables. And now we need to use table E6 in order to work out the smallest possible trunking to install those. So let's have a quick look at that. So as we go over to table E6, we're now looking, well, first one's okay. So we've got to look, it's got to be equal to or greater than this value. So it could be 362 or bigger. But well, the first one is 50 by 50 is 767. So we'll choose that one. But then when you look around a bit, hang on, that's lower. So 75 by 25 is 738. 
So you've got to come all the way through and just have a little sneaky look that there's no others. Okay, so no, I think the smallest factor, which is equal to or greater than this number, is actually 75 by 20 has a factor of 738. So as we come down here, the bottom section, using table, and there's a missing gap, table E6, we can see the factor four um, must be equal to or greater than um, 362. So we worked it out as 362. And we found that the trunking factor of 738, 738 was the trunking 75 mil by 25 mil was the trunking selected and becomes the answer. So that's how we do a calculation where we've got a number of conductors of differing sizes in order to work out the size of trunking. You could install a bigger trunking, don't get me wrong. You can install you can install any of the trunkings in here, but the questions are designed for you to select the smallest possible trunking based on the factor that you get when you get the actual cable calculations. So let's turn over, and now you can see, if I come cover some of the answers up, you've got a problem to problem three to solve, very similar to the one we've just looked at, a number of conductors of different sizes. So it's exactly the same as the example, work through the same way. And then we've got another one, problem four does exactly the same, but becomes a little bit more tricky from the point of view it now only tells you what the circuits are. So example being you've got, um, let's read it to you, PVC trunking that contains the following um, cables of single core thermoplastic PVC strand. You have nine lighting circuits, 16 A2 radial circuits, and 12 A3 radial circuits. So let me just confirm that. So that's nine lighting circuits, did I say? Let's see, yeah, nine lighting circuits. I'll give you a little clue. I've been a bit sneaky, so there'll be, I went with one line, one neutral, and one CPC for those nine lighting circuits. And then I went, they're all 1.5. So you've got to be careful with your numbers. A2 radials, A2 radials according to appendix H would be wired in four millimeter squared, but you'd have a line, a neutral, and a CPC for each one of the circuits, there's 16 circuits. An A3 radial, that would be wired in 2.5. And again, you've got 20 of those, but you'd have a line, a neutral, and a CPC. So I've been a little bit creative with this question here, this problem. The answers are all on the eFix Apprentice Hub as well, under the teacher's corner section at the bottom to do your self-checking. But I've just been a little bit creative with that one. That's the one people tend to get the hump with me in the class because I don't give them that little sneaky bit of information beforehand. So just be careful with that question. And that takes us to the end of that set of notes. So I've done you a whistle-stop tour of how to find the factor for a trunking and a factor for cables in order to size the trunking in relationship to Appendix E when we're using tables E5 and E6. As always, I hope this video has been some help.